What is up everyone? Welcome back to go-kart build video number 19 and this week has been absolutely crazy. I have done so much work on the go-kart. I finished up my summer job just before or just yeah just before leaving to go to Vegas to do the exotics racing for my birthday and this entire past week has been me just going every day the entire day working to get this thing done because I start school on Thursday and I want to try and get this thing running and driving before then. And so, with that being said, I have a lot to catch you guys up on, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front, go to the back, and then talk about what I'm currently working on at the moment. All right, so the first noticeable thing that I've done here in the very front is mount the plate for the pedals and mount the pedals themselves. Now, what I did was I got some quarter inch plate from a metal yard here in San Diego, and then I, so I got the dimensions based on the size I needed, left to right and front to back. And then I went ahead and took my angle grinder and then cut out a little section for the steering column to go down into so I could mount the collar to. And then once I finished that, I got some, uh, because I got the pedals in, um, those are 3 8 inches, um, a 3 8 inch pipe. And so I got some pipe that had 3 8 inch inner diameter and I went ahead and welded that on top of a little mount to the plate. And I'll go ahead and get a closer shot of that now. So as you can see here, this is the shot of the um, up close shot of what the mounting surface looks like for the pedal. Now this is just flat stock here with the pipe welded on top of that and then with that welded to the plate. The pipe, the outside pipe that the um, pedal goes through uh, is short enough so that which I can put a collar on the end and then this can pivot freely and it won't come out. So that is what I've done with the pedals. Um, they're you know pretty well uh, that came out pretty well and for the pedals themselves I got these from Comet Cart Sales and um, I also got these little pedal grips um, for the top so um, they better grip your they grip your shoes better and what I'm still have to work on with these um, is I was kinda messing with it yesterday um, I have to figure out the pedal return spring situation and for a while I had a spring set up on here that mounted to this little bolt here and I tried doing it that way but the geometry didn't really work that way so I had to think again and then I went to this torsion spring idea and a torsion spring as you can see is kind of like wrapped in a little circle with two arms sticking out at a 90 degree angle I mean they vary depending on the spring you get um, so what I have to do is I'm going to get a spring and the reason why there's zip ties on it is to hold the one of the spring arms to the pedal and then one of the spring arms will rest against the plate and you can kind of see it returns but this spring is way too weak so then it kind of just bends after a while so I still have to get that figured out as well as getting all the cables linked to the pedals and that'll come in a little while so now I'll show you what I've been doing next so the next thing you can see is the steering wheel is mounted to the steering column. I have the bolts mounted through the steering column shaft as well as the hub mounted on there and then the steering wheel mounted to the hub. And along with that I got the this piece all finished. I think that was finished in the last video. And then this is the uh, pitman arm and that's, which th that's the part where the um, steering linkages connect to to steer the wheels. And that's pretty much it with the steering so far. And then I'll move on to the back here. Um, so first noticeable thing you can see is I got the engine plate mounted. Yes, there's eight bolts all mounted all the way through the tubing. They've got lock washers on them and everything. And the, this is the mounting plate for the engine. And so uh, I haven't drilled the holes yet for the engine because I have to kind of figure that out. And they're not going to be really holes, they're going to be more ovals so I can kind of adjust the tension on the, on the uh, chain that way. So I still have to drill that. Um, but the next thing that I did was, so I took this axle out and I welded onto the axle simulating a key stock. Because uh, I didn't want to have to try and, because this is just essentially tubing that I've uh, used as an axle it doesn't have a keyway so in in replace of that I just um, I just welded onto the axle to simulate uh, key stock so then once I did that I mounted the new uh, sprocket on and then uh, some of the parts that I got in the mail I got the rotor the brake rotor the brake hub 
the brake caliper and the master cylinder. Um, but I'll st start back here. So what I did was, is I got an L bracket from the local hardware store and kind of modified that L bracket so I could mount the caliper. I used this string to help with caliper spacing. So I kind of wrapped this string around the caliper to make sure that the rotor doesn't sit too far in and start eating away at the inside of the caliper. Once I did that, I got a vertical piece of tubing here, welded some one inch flat stock to it to bring the caliper closer in. Drilled holes through it, drilled holes through the uh, mounting plate, and then mounted the caliper. And then what I finished up yesterday was the mounting point for the master cylinder. So the master cylinder is what pumps the, the, the um, hydraulic fluid through the caliper to make the brakes work. So basically just got another L bracket, same exact L bracket I used for the caliper, drilled holes through it, added this uh, section here in the frame that is parallel to the very edge of the frame. So this, so this master cylinder is then parallel. It's a little shaky because I haven't tightened it down yet. Um, but yeah, so that is the last part that I mounted on the go-kart. And now I will go on to talking about what I'm actually working on at the moment because I brought it over uh, to my girlfriend's house yesterday to show her dad and um, I noticed there were some things wrong with the steering when I brought it over so that's what I've been working on now. So as you can see here there are strings hanging below the go-kart. The strings attach to the bottom of the kingpin up here and they go diagonally across to the center of the rear tire and that goes for both sides so it makes, it, makes an X shape on the bottom of the go-kart. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm, I have to set the Ackerman angle for the steering. And basically if you don't know what an Ackerman angle is, uh, the best thing I can tell you is just go on YouTube and research it yourself because if I tried to explain it to you in the video it would be very confusing. The best way to figure out what an Ackerman angle is is by a drawing or visual representation. But the Ackerman angle basically helps you the wheels turn because they're going all at different radiuses and different speeds so you have to set that so the the way you do this is like i said you set you take a piece of string from the bottom of the kingpin on the front wheel and to the back opposite wheel you attach the same string to the center of the and the, to the bottom of the wheel and then if you do that to the other side it's going to make an x shape and it should line up with the very center of your go-kart, which it does, so I was glad to see that, because if it didn't, there would be some big problems. Um, but basically, what this tells you is, see this angle here, this, that is where, because the, the wheel is in its idle straight state right now. It's not turned or anything. So right now, this spindle mounting point should be here, along this line, not over here because since it's not along this, this line, the reason why, or what happens because of that is the front end plows, it doesn't steer. So the wheels just slide, they don't actually turn. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do some modification here. I'm gonna have to build a bracket, most likely some triangular shaped bracket to connect this point over here. And then um, I'm gonna have to modify the steer, the, the uh, suspension arm a little so this can actually steer farther in. I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to grind this part down so this spindle can actually turn farther because you can see right now the farthest it can turn is exactly along that line but I need it to be able to turn farther than that so I'm gonna have to do some modifications there to allow for clearance. So I'm glad I just I literally just figured this out five minutes ago and so I decided to film this so I can, um, I don't know if I'm going to be working on it exactly right now, but I at least wanted to update you guys so you're caught up with what, what's been going on with the go-kart because there's been a lot happening. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool. I, I really like how it's looking, the visual part of it. I've spent so much time working on this, it's crazy. Now one thing I do have to fix or kind of modify is because I built a removable steering column, this is a little shaky. So, and that's because this tubing doesn't 
precisely fit inside the larger tubing. So I tried to use some sort of like foam to fill the gap, but it's not really working. So what I'm gonna do is just weld onto this and then grind it down until it fits just tight and snug into that, um, into that lower tubing. So then that way I don't get any sort of shake and vibration from the steering column. Uh, let's see, anything else going on with the go-kart? Um, so basically what I gotta do so far is I just have to get all the brake lines hooked up with the proper fittings. I have to get some T's because as you can see there's two cali or uh, not calipers, two cylinders on this caliper, or two pistons, sorry. And so that means that I have to get a T for the brake line because there's only two fittings on the master cylinder and there's four on the caliper. You can see kind of down that way. So I have to get some fittings for that, hook up the brakes, uh, brake lines, bleed the brakes, uh, tighten all the nuts and bolts down to make sure everything doesn't rattle loose. I have to get the throttle, cab throttle cable and brake cable linked up, which I'll probably buy those from a uh, bike store. And then I have to just uh, kind of get this whole steering issue fixed because that was a big uh, issue that I didn't see until I brought it out and actually had, um, I was pushed around on the go-kart and tested the steering. So it's a long process, but hey, that's part of designing and building a go-kart is uh, figuring out what's going on, what's going wrong and fixing it. So a little bit of a correction to the Ackerman um, steering angle setup fixture. So instead of mounting the strings from the kingpin in the front to the center of the rear tire in the, on the opposite side, you actually do it from the kingpin to the center of the rear axle. So you should go from the, the ping, uh, kingpin there right to about there and then vice versa right to about there. And that's actually better because that's less of an angle uh, than I originally had intended. So that means uh, less work to be done. So just a quick fix. As I was watching some more YouTube videos, I actually found out that um, doing it to the center of the axle is actually the proper way to do it and not to the rear tires. So make sure if you're building a go-kart, you take note of that. Okay, so I got the strings all set up again. Um, to be set up to mount to the rear center point on the axle here. I just used some duct tape to kind of hold the string down. Man, this fly keeps bothering me. So now, as you can see, the angle isn't as great as what it was before when I had it mounted to the tires. So now you can see the Ackerman angle is not nearly as far as it was before. Before it was like way over here. So I don't have as much of a modification to do. So that makes me feel better. So as you can see, when you look at it from the front here, those two strings go directly back to the center point on the go-kart, and that will provide the proper Ackerman angle for the steering. So I don't think I'm gonna be working on the go-kart like right at the moment. I just kind of wanted to play around with that Ackerman angle and the string and stuff to see where I need to be at um, with that, because um, I have a few other things I need to do today. I was just up at the Concourse de Elegant show with one of my friends up in, um, Palos Verdes, and that was a really cool show. Lots of classic cars, you know, the very pristine vintage cars, um, but then there was also some uh, Ferraris from Ferrari South Bay, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be, I got three more days before school starts, including uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so I'm gonna be full steam ahead trying to get this thing running, including getting the steering done, mounting the engine, connecting up the chain, and, you know, doing the brakes, and then hopefully by then, it'll be ready to go. And my goal is is to film that so I can keep you guys caught up with that and I will definitely be filming the uh, inaugural run, not the inaugural, but the, the christening run of the go-kart when I start it up for the first time. That'll definitely be caught on camera and the first time I drive it will definitely be caught on camera. So uh, make sure you guys stay tuned because there's a lot of exciting stuff coming uh, in the next you know week or so. Um, so be prepared for that. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions, or comments about the go-kart, please leave them in the comment section below. Also be on the lookout for all the driving videos of me inside the cars and like the onboard video from Exotics Racing. That'll be cool. And I have some other video along with that as well. So again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.